there is a harp facility directly where the beam appears to be originating from. Uh, it's called uh, the Icecat Ram Fjordmon facility. Uh, the island that everybody was seeing this thing over is the northernmost part of Norway called Tromso. It's a little island. And they were looking southeast, and that's where they were seeing it was coming from the southeast. And this harp facility is directly southeast of Tromso. So the location yeah. matches perfectly. What we're seeing is definitely not a rocket because if you look at some of the pictures that are released on the Norwegian websites, you have 18 layers in the spiral. You also can see, if you look at the Daily Mail link, that there is a photograph of it taken in infrared, and the heat signature of the spiral is so substantial that in infrared it actually shows up very bright. Now, that's something they slipped in there. They didn't actually mention why that's important. But you have to remember, the stuff that's coming off the edge of a rocket is going to lose heat very quickly once it hits the atmosphere. You'd need viscosity more like uh, motor oil or chocolate pudding to have something that could resonate enough to create waves that are 18 layers thick. It's not going to happen in the atmosphere from a regular rocket. This is not. The conventional explanation is actually laughable. But, of course, the other big part of the story is that at the end, you see this black hole that shows up. It, the spiral turns into a black hole, which widens very substantially. There's one video in particular where you see this black hole make a very sudden, wide movement. And it's very, very obvious when you look at this that what you're seeing is some kind of projection from the ground. The problem is the infrared signature is so high in terms of the amount of heat coming off of this thing that you would literally need not kilowatts of power, but gigawatts of power in order to run something that would generate that much light and that much temperature. And, of course, HARP facility would have just the right amount of power mapped into it already to be able to use for a purpose like this. I will say that I also got an email from an insider, and all I can say is she's very knowledgeable, and she said in no uncertain terms, this is Bluebeam exactly what it does. This is what it looks like. It's blue beam. Uh, so if that's true, then the spiral is only one of any of a variety of things that they could do with it, which I would agree with. I think that uh, these mystery halos that you've seen over uh, Russia, and I believe there's also one in um, somewhere around Bosnia, uh, they are obviously UFO-like in the way they look and they are bright glowing rings in the air which have been filmed by people in their cars and put on the nightly news in Russia to the effect of making people ask the question, hey, do you think this is a UFO? The missile story might be like a comfortable place that you can reside in for a while to kind of like keep your worldview from falling apart, but I see this very much as people trying to knock down the wall and get to the truth of what's really going on with disclosure here. I have found video of this exact same spiral thing that showed up in Norway, but there's videos of it from 2006 in Russia, and there's a video of it in China published in April 2009 on the Internet. Now, that doesn't mean it was made in April 2009. That just means that we know that it can't be any newer than that. And the one from China actually spins first clockwise and then briefly counterclockwise, and then it dissipates the same as the other one. The one in Russia actually does almost exactly the same thing as we're seeing this one do over Norway. It is a spiral. You can see the same rotating thing, and it's like a beam that consolidates into the spiral. Richard Hoagland has proven that the, that the end location of the beam is HARP. We know that. That's now a fact. What we don't know is, did HARP make the beam from the ground up into space, or is the beam going from space down to HARP? The point that I want to make on that front is that we've seen other examples before of UFOs appearing over such things as nuclear missile installations uh, and even in the air riding alongside uh, missiles as they're being tested. Could this also be something that was perhaps offsetting HARP-based electromagnetic mind control? This is obviously related disclosure. We've had very high-level sources telling us something is going on. They're getting ready to make an announcement. I saw Dr. Stephen Greer speak recently at the Secrets Conference in Phoenix, Arizona, which I spoke at. 
the weekend before last weekend, and he gave some very interesting information as well that I wanted to share, and that is that he's been working with a scientist who has access to the knowledge to be able to build very practical, high-energy yield, free energy devices. He has this knowledge. Now, everything had been going well with Greer, and they were getting the financing together to basically release the technology out to the world to help save the planet. And then, of course, since there are multiple levels of the cover-up and they don't all agree with each other, in fact, there's a lot of factions and a lot of infighting, one of the factions went after uh, this guy and basically ostracized him and got him out of the country to some secure location, quote-unquote, which probably means an underground facility, overseas in Europe. And he was basically being held prisoner there. There was no forward movement. Now, as of two weeks ago, when, I, when we met Dr. Greer and I did get a chance to speak to him, uh, we actually have now gotten confirmation the powers that be have set this man free. They're willing to allow him to resume his work with Greer and it is going to be moving forward. They're, they're going to allow his technology to be brought out into the, into the public. The changes that we're talking about, whatever this fourth density shift is, if you want to use channelese, like from the Law of One, or if you want to call it ascension, to use a Christian term that I often have used, or if you want to go more scientific and say that it's like this galactic energy wave that's coming in that seems to be transforming DNA, molecular biology in very fundamental ways that you can measure in the fossil record, these 26 and 62 million year cycles in which all the life on Earth basically gets a rewrite and seems to upgrade quite spontaneously, my explanation has always been that those long-term cycles of multi-millions of years are happening because of galactic waves that actually rewrite DNA. And we have laboratory proof that that can happen. We have Garyev, this Russian scientist, who's actually shown frog eggs being rewritten into salamander eggs by taking the waves from the salamander eggs and shining them into the frog eggs. So we know this stuff works. We know that it's available. And what I keep saying is don't expect some cosmic light switch to go off on December 21st, 2012. The human species is now evolving 100 times faster in the last 5,000 years. And what that also means is that if you took somebody from 3,000 B.C., that person is more similar to Neanderthal than they are to you and me. That's how fast our DNA is changing. Dr. John Hawks from University of Wisconsin has proven that. So we already know that we're going through this massive evolutionary spike. We already know that we've had a massive increase in technology in the last 300 years. What I'm saying is, don't keep waiting for something to happen. It's going to happen right in front of your face. It's going to happen right now. It's going to be no denying it, and you're not going to have to wait for it. And we are seeing now the manifestations of things we never thought possible, an unimaginable manifestation of this weird spiral in the sky that looks like a painting. It does not look like a natural phenomenon at all. And there it is. So the proof is right in front of your face. You don't need to wait for it, and it's going to keep happening. I do believe that. I think the more that the stakes rise and the more that people are pushing the envelope here, you're probably going to see more and more of this type of stuff happening. It's not just going to – if, if, if nobody actually says the disclosure outright on national television, it's going to happen through some sort of really wild technological demonstration that nobody can ignore. And I think that, again, it may be resorting to guys like you and me – and all of you people out there listening, we're the ones that know what's going on. We're going to need to help people who don't know what's going on. They're going to be very confused and frightened. And we're going to need to help them understand this is not an alien invasion in progress. This does not mean you're going to be living on gravel and shoe leather. You know, you're going to have an economy. Things are going to keep on going. There is an, a higher positive presence that I call management, the ETs, that basically make sure the planet doesn't fall apart. And so you read about things like from Dr. Beter about this uh, Battle of Harvest Moon and the Battle of the Underwater uh, Missiles. They keep getting thrown off. We don't have an apocalypse, although the insiders keep trying to make one happen. It never does. So I just, again, you know, regardless of what the callers are going to say, I want to make sure before we get to that that the message comes back to the fact that we may have to do this disclosure ourselves and we are doing it. And the more whistleblowers who are brave enough and willing enough to come forward and share what they know with us 
and share it with the people and not try to profit off of it and become multi-billionaires, but share the technology. We can create the future we want.